hello and welcome to the channel or welcome back if you are a returning viewer. It's super rad to have you here. I'm Sarah Matthews and in this video we're going to take a normal photo of the moon that looks something like this. That's actually a photo of a tortilla so something more like this and transform it into looking more like this using the power of Photoshop, some good old transfer of knowledge through YouTube and a reliable internet connection of course. Because as you know, or if you didn't know, the moon's surface has minerals on it and that's really cool. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the science behind the minerals and it should be a pretty fun time. So as long as you have an image of the moon taken with a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you should be in business. So it could be either a single photo or a stacked image. It doesn't really matter. And yeah, all that being said, let's grab some snacks and we will get this party started. All right, we are here in Photoshop, obviously, and I have a photo of the moon that I took a couple years ago, and I used a mirrorless full frame camera with this, but if you have an image of the moon from a different lunar phase, please feel free to use it. You can definitely apply these uh, processes to that image as well. Now let's say that you wanted to bring in a stacked image of the moon. So where you took multiple photos of the moon, you picked the best ones, stacked them all together to get more signal or more data to reveal more details. You could definitely bring in that image into Photoshop, but you are going to first have to convert it and you're going to convert it to a .tiff file. Now it's okay if it remains a 32-bit .tiff file. Um, we will just convert it to a 16-bit file later on after our first round of adjustment layers. So. The next thing that I'm gonna show you is how to bring in a raw file from a DSLR or mirrorless camera, since sometimes that can be a little bit confusing. And I'm also gonna show you how to remove fringing or chromatic aberration where you have this purple or green separation. So I'm gonna show you an example of what that is. So I'm gonna bring that into Adobe Camera Raw. So come up here to File, Open. So here I have this image, I'm gonna press Open. And this is a single image from a DSLR, actually this DSLR and this camera lens here. And I'm going to zoom in. And if you're not familiar with what Adobe Camera Raw is, it's a plugin for Photoshop CC that allows you to bring in a raw image from our DSLR or mirrorless camera and bring it into Photoshop because it's actually going to reconstruct the color data from the camera sensor, more or less. But you can also do a lot of different types of adjustments as well. And it's not just for raw images, you can bring in a JPEG or a TIFF, etc. But the reason I'm showing you this is because I wanna show you what that color fringing is. So I'm just going to do Command plus plus to zoom in. Again, I'm on a Mac. And to grab it, the screen, I'm just gonna come over here. Okay, so you see all this green and purple on the edges. I'm not sure if it's coming through on YouTube. But like here, for example, here. Now this is chromatic aberration. And basically what chromatic aberration is, is where the light that's coming through your camera lens or telescope, those different wavelengths or color wavelengths of light aren't all coming back to a single point to create white light. So you're seeing this color separation. And when you're using a higher end camera lens or a telescope um, or a higher end telescope, a lot of times they will actually correct for this separation of color. But fortunately for this type of chromatic aberration, it's really easy to fix in post. And I'm gonna show you how. So we're just going to come down here to optics and you wanna make sure that you have remove chromatic aberration selected. And then you're going to want to select use profile corrections. This is just another added benefit. And then keep it at the default. And then for your lens profile, select your camera model brand. So for me, this one right here that I use is a Canon and it should automatically pick up the metadata from your camera lens and just pre-populate it here. So I was using the 300 millimeter or 75 to 300 millimeter um, Canon lens and it's going to bring up that specific correction model for that camera lens. Now, I'm going to come down here to defringe. Now I'm gonna take this little sampler and I'm just going to sample an area. Now what might happen is what you're seeing here on the screen where this area is just too neutral, okay? Then we need to sample a different area. That's totally fine. I can grab the little hand tool, grab the little eyedropper again.
Okay, now what we need to do is, is we are going to apply some manual adjustments by changing like the purple amount just to kind of get the right color balance that we're going for. So just zoom out. You can also adjust the hue of the purple and you can also adjust the uh, amount of green as well as the hue of the green. So um, I think this looks pretty good for now. I'm gonna open this up into Photoshop. So come over here down at the bottom right, little arrow, open as copy. The reason I'm doing it open as copy and not any other way is because I don't want to create or I don't want to work on the original image from the memory card if you haven't already taken that image off the memory card and put it somewhere else. So we're done with that. Don't save. Also, if you would like to use this specific image to follow along with, you definitely can. I have this available for my patrons over on my Patreon's Google Drive folder located here. I also have a couple other images if you would like to use those as well from other lunar phases. Now the next thing that we're gonna focus on is getting our overall color balance and tone right. So if you have a raw image from a DSLR or mirrorless camera, so it's a .03, .CR2, .NEF, or anything from like a Sony or a Pentax, et cetera, let's go back to Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm gonna reopen up this image. I'll actually open up a copied image of this or duplicated image. So just make sure that you go back to Adobe Camera Raw, open up your original image. The nice part about working in Adobe Camera Raw with an actual raw image from a DSLR mirrorless camera is that it gives you a ton of flexibility with the sensor data. So you have a lot more room with your overall dynamic range. You have more room to make adjustments with your overall color balance. So that's why we're back here in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm gonna just um, try auto. And sometimes this works really well for an image. I have a couple images where it does, but for this image, it kind of makes it look a little bit flat. I could certainly come under here under the lights panel and make some of these adjustments to kind of get it less flat looking, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm gonna to turn off auto. Where I really wanna to go to is down here at calibration. And of course, if you needed to make your chromatic aberration adjustments or fringing adjustments, please feel free to do that. But under calibration, under process, I want version six current selected. And then I'm just going to increase these values for saturation for each primary color channel. So with red, I'm just gonna boost it to 100. For green, I'm gonna do the same. And for saturation, I'm also gonna do the same. And this just brings out the colors a little bit more, which gives us a good starting place for us being in Photoshop. So come down here to open, open as copy. I suppose I don't need this anymore, so I'm just gonna close out of that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is come up here to image and I'm gonna rotate this. Come down here to image rotation. I'm gonna just rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise. And if you wanted to zoom in, it's the same thing with Adobe Camera Raw. Command plus on a Mac or Command minus on a Mac to zoom out. Control plus on a Windows device to zoom in. Control minus to zoom out on a Windows device. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is work with some of our adjustments. And we're going to be using layers to make these adjustments. And the nice part about layers in Photoshop, if you're not familiar, is that it gives us a lot of flexibility to go back to one of these adjustments. If we need to make some changes to that adjustment layer, we can turn off that adjustment layer if we need to. We can blend it in a certain way, all without degrading our background image here. So in the layers panel. So if you want your workspace to look like mine, come up here to Windows, Workspace, select Photography. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this layer I'm going to left click on my mouse and hold. I'm gonna bring it down to this little plus button dude contained in a box, release, and you should see the copied version here. The next thing that I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to just remove this little doobler dust mode dude here. If you don't have any sort of issue like this, please feel free to move on to the next section, but I do have this issue, so I'm gonna duplicate this layer again. I'm gonna change the text to doobler removal slash spot healing brush, because that is a technical term. <laughs> Press enter. And then over here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna use this spot healing brush tool. So I'm just gonna zoom into this little dude, and say, hi, command plus, hello. <laughs> so unfortunately, this is a dust mote, and ideally you wouldn't have any dust on your optics, but alas, sometimes you just do. And usually you should correct this with flats, but I did not. So I have my brush tool here on the left-hand side, the spot healing brush, and I have the little circle brush here to make this brush bigger. Do right bracket on your keyboard to make it smaller. You can do the left bracket. And 
I'm going to keep everything the same. The size is just what I showed you. You can just use this slider instead. I'll keep, or I'm going to move the hardness up to 8, and I'll keep the spacing at 10. And the type is just going to be content aware. Blend mode is going to be normal. So, now if this didn't work very well, just do Command Z or Control Z. Okay, that's kind of the best it's gonna be, unfortunately, but it's okay, stuff happens. So to no longer have the little brush tool activated, come up here to the move tool and we can keep going. So the next thing that I wanna do is I want to duplicate this layer here. If you didn't have to use the spot healing brush, then just duplicate the background copy. I'm just gonna name this auto color, auto color test and this may work for your specific image, it may not, but I just want to show you because what we're really trying to do is just get our colors in, in alignment. So come over here to image, auto color, and it did a pretty good job, but my concern here are these highlights in the highland regions. They are blown out, and when something is blown out or clipped, you just can't get that data back and it just degrades the overall image. So I am not going to keep that. And the reason I know that is because if I open up levels, our levels adjustment tool here, um, levels gives us an overall view of the histogram and I'm looking at the RGB values. So over here we have the highlights at 255, we have our midtones here at one and we have our shadows over here at zero. And if I turn off the auto color test, you can see that those highlights are in here or have moved significantly over here so we clipped our brightest parts and we don't want that especially for the moon which has a lot of dynamic range so if it worked for your image great if not let me show you how to do this in a different way so to delete these layers just left click on the mouse to select press shift and then select this auto color test with your left click of your mouse drag this down to this little trash can dude and then I'm actually just going to duplicate this layer again if it you didn't have the spot healing brush just it should just be background copy so I'm going to come over here to levels. The next thing I want you to do is press alt on your keyboard for a Windows machine. And if you're on a Mac, press option and hold that down. Come over here to auto. And you want enhanced brightness and contrast selected. Press OK. The color channels should be aligned a little bit better. I don't like that the highlights are clipped as much. So I'm just going to move the highlights down to about 245. 245 is a really good number to start with your colors. And I'm going to bring the midtones down just a little bit. It doesn't need to be so bright. I'll start at 1.8 or 1.08. So you want your image to be somewhat bright, but not super crazy where you've clipped everything. So this is a good starting place. Okay, so I've showed you kind of a couple different ways to just get the overall color balance in your image looking okay. And we've also just gotten the overall tone values in a good place. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take all of these layers and we're going to bring them into a new tab up here because we're going to use this new image for sharpening. This image is going to be for all of our color adjustments or the color adjustments going forward. So to bring all of these into new tab, make sure you do left click on your mouse, press shift, come down here to background and you're going to right click on your mouse and come down here to duplicate layers. And this window is going to appear under document in the drop down menu, select new because we want a new destination. I'm going to name this ouch slash sharp because this is for sharpening. You can name it whatever you want, of course. But we are no longer under the color image here. They're obviously both RGB images, but we're using this for sharpening. So it's going to open up us in this new tab. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is just apply a very subtle amount of noise reduction. So. I'm going to make sure that my top layer is selected, left click on the mouse, shift, and then select this background copy layer. And because I have this spot healing brush tool, I'm actually gonna just delete these layers here. Um, if you didn't have to use a spot healing brush, please keep those, but I am just going to duplicate this layer again, and I'm gonna just turn off that. So take your top layer, press shift, and then select this here, your second to last background adjustment. And then we are going to convert this to a smart object by right clicking on our mouse, 
convert to smart object. And this is just another way that we can apply some of these processes without being destructive. I'll turn this layer back on actually. So I'm gonna double click on the text. I'm gonna name this blur, like the band, <laughs> press return or enter. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer by just holding right, left click on my mouse, drag it to this little plus dude. I'm gonna rename this high pass. You could name it HP for Hewlett Packer or Harry Potter or whatever. Press enter and then turn off this layer's visibility. Come over here down to blur, make sure it's selected. Come up here to filter at the top. Come down here to blur and Gaussian blur. And I'm just gonna zoom out really quick. And what we want with this is just to apply a very subtle amount of noise reduction to our image. If the moon appears smaller in your field of view than here, then I would recommend applying maybe a value of one or 1.5. You can always go back and change. And if you have a stacked image, you could probably get away with not having to use any of this blur at all. You could just go right to high pass. But I'm gonna start with 0.4. Again, the larger the value, the more blur. So for me, I'm just gonna try 0.4. I'm going to press OK, and I'm going to come up here to High Pass, make sure it's selected, turn on its visibility again, come up here to Filter, come down here to Other, Over, and down to High Pass. And I'm not sure if you can see this through YouTube because it's pretty faint, but I'll try to zoom in. Now the nice part about using a High Pass filter to sharpen something in Photoshop like the moon is that it's going to really enhance those details uh, like edges and textures while we can try to preserve some of those smoother areas to avoid over sharpening. Now, if you have an image of the moon where it appears smaller in your field of view, I would probably start at a radius uh, value of about 1.5. If you have a stacked image, you could probably go up anywhere, maybe up to 10, but I will caution you that going up too far, you're gonna start to get these artifacts on those edges that I was talking about, which is not really typically a good thing, but you can always go back and make adjustments if you need to. So I'm gonna start at four for my specific image. I'm gonna press okay. And you're like probably like, whoa, what happened? You can't see anything. Come up here to the blend mode under normal in the drop down menu, and we're going to select linear light. And we should now see a lot more detail. In fact, I'm actually probably gonna just bring this down a little bit to like three. So I think that looks pretty good. Again, if you need to change any of these settings, just double click on Gaussian Blur or press High Pass and you can make those adjustments. Now I'm gonna show you how to convert a 32-bit image to a 16-bit image. So I'm just gonna open that up. If you don't have a 32-bit image, you can just skip ahead. So this image here is a stacked image. So I'm gonna press open. It is a dot .tiff. I'm gonna keep the embedded profile since trying to convert sRGB to Adobe RGB is usually lossless to my understanding. So I'm gonna press okay. So this image here is from Cyril. It's a stacked image that I created by taking multiple images of the moon um, using a DSLR, stacking the best ones together that were the clearest and then I cropped the final image and I did apply some color calibration or some green noise removal, and then I applied some sharpening. So I am just going to come over here to levels. I'm actually gonna duplicate this layer. And if you have this gray cast, that's totally okay. Open up levels and we're just going to manually kind of bring this to a linear state by bringing down the shadows. You may need to use some of these sliders in a little bit of a different way, depending on your histogram, but start with levels and the goal is just to get your image to a place kind of similar to this. If you have a terminator line, be very mindful of that as well. So that looks pretty good. I could probably bring up those highlights just a little bit and that looks pretty good. So I will close out of that. If you need to make multiple levels adjustments, you can. Now to convert it into a 32 bit image, because as you can see here at the top here at the tab, it says 32. We can also see that some of our adjustments here are grayed out. You can come up here to image mode and it also says 32 bit. So make sure your top layer is selected, press shift and then select your last layer, your background layer. And then you're gonna come up here to image again, mode, come down here to 16 bit channel and you're gonna have to merge the layers together, which is 
destructive in a sense, but it's really the only way that we can get to a 16-bit image so that we can start working with some of our other color adjustments. So press merge. And under this window here, under method, under the drop-down menu, select exposure and gamma. And we are good, and you can move about the cabin. Press OK, and we are good to go. You could duplicate the layer, but I'm just going to close out of this. And I'm going to come back over here to my color image. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start working with our color adjustments. And I like to use Vibrance just as a starting point. Vibrance is really nice because it's going to help us just bring out those less saturated colors from the onset. I'm not going to be aggressive with this at all. I'm going to be very slow to make these adjustments. So I'm actually just going to use a value of 10. And I do want to also preface that you don't have to make any of these adjustments in the same way that I am. Just do whatever you think looks best, but do be gentle with each adjustment. And of course, if you have a stacked image, you're going to be able to be a little bit more aggressive with these steps because you have more data to work with. Okay, so I was very subtle with my vibrance. You probably can't tell much of a difference, but that's kind of the point. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over here to hue and saturation. And we're going to keep the default settings here with master selected. And I'm going to select 10 again. So I'm not sure if you can see some of the colors start to appear in your image, but in this image here, we are starting to kind of see some of those hues from the sun reflecting those chemical compositions, which is really neat. We have a lot of different areas on the moon. Um, we have these kind of brighter areas known as the highlands here and here and here. And these of course are areas higher in elevation, but then we have these lower elevation areas like here and here and here and here. These are known as the seas or the, the Maria. This is the Sea of Tranquility. Uh, and what's really interesting about Maria is that they originally formed from basins when the moon was kind of done hardening and then we had a bunch of volcanic activity. And what you're seeing here with this kind of orange and blue coloring, the minerals from different lava flows, specifically this blue coloring. And this indicates titanium in this region. So that's pretty interesting. It's cool to see that different lava flows had different minerals in them. And that's true even for us here on Earth. We of course also have very large craters. We have Copernicus over here, and we also have Tycho over here. Each of them also have a mountain range in the middle, which is crazy. And Tycho also has such large ejecta that expands even to the far side of the moon or the, the side that we can't see, which is absolutely wild how big of an impact that is. And also in the Sea of Tranquility over here, you can see some of these impact craters as well. So um, you can kind of see this history. You know, we had these lava flows and then we had these craters occur. And you can see just kind of this story of how the moon evolved. And how the moon looks now is not what it's going to look like in a million years. It's just going to keep evolving from more impacts, from the solar wind kind of carving away at it. And especially if us humans start to inhabit it, if we start to mine the minerals on it, you know, obviously that's a very controversial topic, but it's an interesting topic nevertheless. So the moon's minerals are just very interesting. I highly recommend looking into the geology. Okay, now that we're done with this, that science lesson, let's come back over here to human saturation. And I'm going to keep it at master. I'm gonna repeat this at 10. Do that again, 10. Now let's say that you wanna get kind of specific about the colors that you do wanna saturate. So say for instance, you wanted to, I don't know, bring up some more of these magenta areas. You can come over here to hue and saturation, come here to the drop down menu, select magentas, and you should see this little bar up here and these kind of little arrows and you can just adjust the range of tone that you would like for the magentas. And I'm just gonna, you know, let's just try 19. Okay, that looks okay. And then let's do another hue and saturation. I will do 10 again. Again, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm just kind of showing you some different tools. Oh, one more. And you could go crazy with this. If you wanted to, you could make this super saturated. Like I said, obviously the more data that you have, especially in a stacked image, you could push this really far and make it really colorful. But right now, 
I'm liking this kind of just subtle look. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my sharpened image and I'm going to make sure that my top layer is selected, press shift, come down here to the last layer and we're going to right click on our mouse and we are going to convert it to a smart object. Then I'm going to press, I'm actually going to zoom out so you can see this, then do command A or control A on your keyboard and you should see these little marching ants everywhere. That means we've selected this and then do control C to copy or command C to copy. Come back over here and then we're going to do command V to paste or control V to paste. And I'll do that again actually. So I have two. I'm gonna turn off this layer, layer two for now. Come back here to layer one. And there are lots of different blend modes you could use. You could also change the opacity or how much you're seeing through this in this final image. But let's try overlay. It's pretty intense, but I just wanted to experiment and kind of show you some different options. Come up here to layer two, turn on the visibility for that layer. Let's go back to the bending mode and let's try luminosity. So I think that looks pretty good. We could change how much of overlay that we wanted. We could do, I don't know, 60% just so that we kind of get a little bit more detail going on, but not a ton. Now, you could also make some very selective color adjustments by coming up here to select color range. And under sampled colors, we could, you know, look at the highlights and you can adjust the fuzziness. You can adjust the range of the highlights. You'd be very, very specific. I think that's okay, let's press okay. Again, you don't have to do this. I'm just kind of just trying to show you the tools uh, and how to use them. So if you do want to make your own, you definitely can. So maybe we will try Vibrance. And we're starting to see some more light blue come out, which I think looks pretty cool. I'm gonna press I'm just going to use those little arrows to close out. Now, let's say we wanted to add some curves because we wanted some contrast, for example. We could just take our little pointer finger dude and since I don't want to make any adjustments to the brightest areas or to the darkest areas, I'm just going to sample those. So you should see the, that dark point here and that light point here. And to bring a value up or to make it brighter, you could of course, you know, bring it up or bring it down. You could of course like do like a nice little S curve. Just kind of, you know, whatever you think looks best. I don't like that, so I'm just gonna delete it. But yeah. So I would recommend saving this as a .psd file, coming up here to file, save as, and then just, you know, saving it as a Photoshop document down here, press save. And then you could also export it as a TIFF or PNG as well by just coming over here to file, export, export as. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. And until the next video, I hope you have clear skies.